Hello, and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. In part one of this trilogy, I'll put the link above, I explained how the SAP Basis Administrator role was going to change now we have Rise with SAP. Then, in part two, I talked about the three different paths that a classical SAP Basis Administrator could take to ensure a technical career in a post-Rise with SAP world. However, in that second video, there was a bit of a sting in the tail. Our classical basis administrator was riding a rise wave, but exploding onto stage, we now also have AI. AI is going to disrupt everything we've ever known about SAP administration. And in this video, I explain why. As I've mentioned in past videos before, I expect that all customers will eventually become rise or grow with SAP customers. Beam us up. The traditional license method, known as perpetual license, is no longer a viable option. SAP have said this time and time again. They don't want multiple product streams. It costs too much to maintain and kills their innovation levels. SAP will push every customer to be a subscription-based customer, which only works under a rise or grow with SAP subscription. As a small recap, and I know you've been following along, but some people jump in partway through a trilogy expecting a recap, so we're going to recap. In a rise with SAP subscription, the role of the classical SAP basis administrator changes to be an application basis role and removes, partially, the technical aspects from the role as these are done by SAP. Those technical tasks are requested by the customer's application basis administrator, raising a service request in the SAP support portal. The service request is a web-based electronic request form that needs to be completed with different forms for different tasks. The application basis administrator needs to know what to enter into the different form templates to ensure that SAP have all the information that they need to complete the request at the, at the SAP end in an efficient way. There are plenty of stories of inefficiencies in this process and delays to projects being the most common symptoms. So the role of the SAP application basis administrator is pretty crucial here as the experience and knowledge of the technical process would allow them to complete the required template request form in a reasonably accurate way. However, we've now got AI, and the capabilities are coming from all directions, and this might not be good news for application basis. There will come a point in the evolution of the rise of SAP product where costs would likely be squeezed, to continue providing value for customers, and obviously more profit for SAP, one way of reducing costs would be to lengthen SLAs, allowing team sizes within SAP to be reduced. This is probably not a real option that any software vendor moving towards pure SaaS is going to take. Although you can look at companies like Amazon with their Prime Video service, where advertisements are now embedded into the basic Prime Video service, the service is effectively degraded slightly to avoid price increases although they have increased the prices. Another way of reducing cost is automation. AI will increase automation adoption. This is simply because AI can be used to interpret a request and generate the basic code needed to both automate a task and also execute a task. As an example, let's look at the probable execution of an SAP service request in a Rise with SAP subscription. And I can only suppose that this is the process because I don't work for SAP processing these requests. In my example, the execution of a request has five core elements. Number one, the raising of a request by a customer. The customer has a business requirement, which has elements that need translating into a set of technical requirements. Could you make me a Waldorf cell? Some of these need requesting because they are executed by SAP under the Rise with SAP contractual agreement. Don't forget that the requester also needs to understand which tasks SAP are performing because the customer could have agreed to pay SAP for additional tasks. Someone technical on the customer side will raise the request with SAP. The request needs to be categorized correctly by SAP, so the form needs to ask the correct questions and minimize any confusion. Number two, the interpretation of what has been asked in a request. Interpretation of the request either requires a rigorous template form that allows minimal manual mistakes to be made by the customer during the request step, or it needs a human to interpret a loose request and then ask for any subsequent missing information in order to complete the task. A oh, uh, oh, Waldorf cell. Well, I think we're just out of Waldorf. It's more efficient to have a rigorous template if this task is requested by a lot of customers, and therefore effort would need to be spent upfront 
creating a request form template and breaking out the parameters into questions. Number three, the triage of the request. Once a customer's request is received by SAP, the SLA clock starts ticking. Some requests will have tasks that need multiple teams and the task will need to be flowing between those teams efficiently. You can start to see that some form of workflow is needed. Not only workflow, but scheduling. Tasks that have a shorter SLA should progress quicker through teams than tasks with longer SLAs. How about tasks that have been delayed? I'm awfully sorry, he's forgotten already. They may need to be reprioritized. To manage the tasks efficiently needs a mechanism not too dissimilar to that used by Uber for booking your taxi. Number four, the execution of the tasks. A technical team of experts within SAP will need to have the exact information about how to execute the task in a standard, repeatable process. It's lettuce and tomato, walnuts... No, 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 it's celery, apples, walnuts, grapes. In a mayonnaise sauce. Including the parameters required which have been completed by the customer or by a previous team if this is one of the many teams involved in fulfilling the request. Once a task is executed, the output may be needed in a specific format for the subsequent teams. The output may also need some form of validation. Different integrations will be needed at different levels of different technologies. Number five, the response back to the customer. The customer needs some form of response and a sign off would really be ideal. That's a bunch of ass, that's what that is. It's fine. Why can't you make a wall off salad? Well, well, <laughs> Has the request been completed? We can see that there are a lot of moving parts to the above process. A lot of time could be wasted just at the initial stage of breaking requests down into specific areas and scheduling it. This is where AI can help. Let's apply an AI to the request process. At step one, the interaction with the customer could be handled by an AI agent. Waldorf self. Taking the customer through the required process to build up the request. No rigorous form template is needed, as the AI is able to provide that function based on minimal inputs from each of the tasks that make up the request. Since the AI is handling the buildup of tasks from the request, the steps are already validated. It's celery, apples, walnuts, grapes. Right. In mayonnaise. Right. And even to the point of advising the customer of an expected duration. The customer would receive an overview of the breakdown of the requests into tasks, the duration of the tasks, the expected overall duration of the request, and an idea of the outcome of the request. <laughs> now we've got apples. Oh, terrific! Is it going to be successful or not? Because of the pre-validation, time is not wasted handling the request. Remember, the SLA to handle a request is part of the Rise with SAP contractual agreement. But if the request is pre-validated during submission, it's way more efficient than bouncing it to and fro with the customer. In effect, the customer gets the request completed in a quicker time due to less mistakes during the submissions. Plus, the customer can see upfront when the task is estimated to be completed based on current real time and can more accurately plan the additional customer tasks around this request. At step two, no interpretation of the request is needed because the AI has done all of this work at step one. At step three, the tasks are already known and validated by the AI. In fact, the SAP technical teams within SAP could be pre-advised of a request coming through that will require certain skills. At step four, the execution of easily automated tasks could be completed by specific AI agents with the required output provided. And finally, at step five, the customer response is provided by an AI that is able to summarize each task output. And one more door salad. What can we deduce from the above idealistic scenario? The technical engineers and basis administrators at SAP servicing the incoming requests would only be working on specific tasks, a little bit like a factory, and potentially only be needed for certain tasks where an AI is not yet able to perform a complex task. And I think a task is complex when it requires experience to understand a likely input or output. An example could be a performance problem or a software bug, something that an AI has not been trained for. The experience of an AI is only what it has digested and learned through similar scenarios, and that learning involves a set of weights and biases. The more complex the input that is required to generate a specific problem, the more unlikely the AI is going to be able to resolve the problem. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. 
Essentially, in the future, the technical engineers and basis administrators at SAP will only be working on specific tasks like problem analysis. As well as an impact to those working at SAP, there is also an impact to those application basis administrators at the customer and also the partner cloud architects. We've seen how the future process of raising a request could be made much more efficient with AI, which means that the request raising process could be performed by less IT focused skill sets, maybe even by the business teams themselves. No way, man. The business could simply ask the AI to raise a request to SAP for patching of the SAP system. The AI would interrogate the SAP system to obtain all the required details and propose an upgrade target to the requester. Any required decisions about add-on compliance, known defects, functional changes would be provided in a report for consideration. Analysis complete. Of course, technical bugs would need translation from technical language into a business perspective. Je m'appelle Claude. Je de code blue. No. This would also be done by the AI in the report. Example, a bug in module XYZ means that the procure to pay process would not be able to work with products from vendor ABC. The business would analyze the report and provide authorization to proceed with the upgrade, which would be handled by AI at the SAP end of the request. Is any of the above possible, you might ask? Well, consider this. I wrote the script for this video back in March 2024, and now in June 2024 at the SAP Sapphire event, SAP have announced that Joule will be able to provide a form of functional consulting support. Not so unlikely now, is it? What does the future hold for SAP 10 years from now? It's difficult to predict, but you have to imagine that AI adoption is a logarithmic improvement. AI will be used to train and enhance AI, which will be used to develop better microchips, which will improve AI speed. This has long been known to be possible as part of an intelligence explosion. Just like different generations of programming languages have been overlaid to remove complexity, AI will overlay services themselves, allowing those with business requirements to simply request the service in business terms. Could you make me a Waldorf cell? Without knowledge of the underlying technology. Eventually, this will be termed as something like business as a service. A complete model business could be spun up by an entrepreneur just like an SAP landscape can be spun up by an automation engineer right now. Are we anywhere close to this level of automation? No, we're nowhere near it. No matter what you read about AI, it is still only doing what we give it the ability to do. It's pigeonholed right now, siloed. It needs many more hours of training and many more models to be created. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong and we're already at the precipice. Maybe AGI, the singularity, the general AI that surpasses human intelligence and we are able to do anything is just around the corner. Maybe. As always, reference links in the description down below, drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.